What's up gamers, how the heck are you? This last update we got from Valheim was a big one in my opinion. There was a lot of back-end changes. Hildur's Quest was added, which is super exciting. That came along with a ton of cosmetics and fun little quests that you can do throughout the game. Three new dungeons, and in those dungeons, three new mini bosses. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss all three dungeons and we're gonna talk about all three mini bosses and what you should expect when entering each dungeon. So without further ado, let's get to the video. So more than likely, the very first of these dungeons that you'll come encounter with is probably gonna be the Smoldering Tomb. This is gonna be located in the Black Forest and it's pretty much the easier of the three being that it's located in already kind of a lower tier biome now when approaching the smoldering tomb it's going to look a lot like some of the other caves or tombs that you've been into within the black forest but this one's gonna be a little different it's going to be lit with torches on the outside and then obviously your raven friend will appear and he's basically going to tell you that this tomb is a little bit stronger than your other tombs you've been into so be careful when entering it so essentially it's laid out pretty much just like any other tomb you've entered in the black forest and there's gonna be similar enemies in there as well but the difference is these enemies are going to be at least one star or higher depending on if you go in with a crew or not if you go in by yourself they're gonna be just one star but it will just be skeletons so if you already progressed kind of far in the game this should be no issue but if you are early on a game a bunch of one star skeletons can be kind of difficult if you're not ready for them honestly though even if you are just a few biomes ahead having a bunch of one star skeletons could be a little annoying if if you weren't ready for it or you didn't expect it coming in so just be careful that is what is in there so if you haven't gone in yet the it's all the same type of enemies just they are stronger and that's pretty much it for the most part there is one change and that's towards the end of it now that being said you are looking for a particular room generally you won't be looking for this room in any other cave because it doesn't exist but in this room it's going to be kind of like the boss room so now if you guys don't want to hear anything about the boss or hear who it is or what it looks like and or if you haven't seen any spoilers then stop my video now Go to the next section. It'll be, uh, I'll have them tagged below what the sections are and I'll, I'll have them marked out for you so that you don't get any information on this. If you don't want to know what it looks like, or if you don't want to see, you know, any spoilers for it, I completely understand. But this part is where we're going to talk about the mini boss. So go ahead and stop the video and cut to the next section. And then you won't hear about the mini boss in this one. And you can just hear about the next, uh, the next dungeon. Once you've made your way all the way through the smoldering tomb, you're going to open up a door that's going to lead you to the probably the largest room within the tomb itself. And you're going to see a creature standing there that you've never seen before. It is a fiery skeleton. This fiery skeleton is your new mini boss. And there's no summoning or anything like that that you do with the other bosses. They are just in this area. So the moment you open the door, they'll probably start attacking you. No real tricks here other than now that you know they're on fire, you can come with some fire resistance. If you have that, that'll be helpful. If you have frost weapons like frost or of that that'll work great against this creature it'll do a ton of damage so if that's something that you have great use that if not i mean honestly i i used black i had black metal with me if you have that if you don't have black metal if you haven't made your way all the way to the plains yet that's fine but bring a mace or something like that they do really well against skeletons and then just if you can get fire resistance great get it if you don't have it that's okay i didn't go in with it as long as you are decent at blocking you should be fine she has a fiery attack that she will throw at you which is manageable so just be careful with that the only tip i can really give you for this one that be good because basically because it's kind of easy but the only tip i really want to give you for this one is there are four sarcophagus in this room if you walk near them they will summon what's inside of them which is a one star skeleton so if you don't want to fight Brianna and four one star skeletons, don't move a lot in the room. Kind of stay put and just fight her at the door or or pull her out of the room. You can do that as well. But that's how I recommend fighting her for this one. Once you finally kill Brianna, you can pick up her trophy, but she will also drop the chest that you've been looking for. This is the chest that healed your lost. And if you bring it back to her, drop it out uh, you you throw it at her pretty much. <laughs> and uh it, it opens up and uh, reveals a lot more uh, cosmetic items that you know that you can search for one I'll show you at the end what this looks like um, when I when you deliver things to uh, heal deer so the next dungeon that you're probably going to move on to is the howling caverns now this one can be kind of difficult if you're not ready for it but I'm going to prepare you as best I can so the howling caverns one is located in the mountain biome and the entrance looks pretty much like every other cavern that you've come up to in the mountain biomes except that this one's going to have two burning blue fires out in front and obviously your raven friend's going to pop up and say wow there's a lot stronger enemies here maybe you should prepare yourself before you come in here well okay so anyway you enter in and it's just like every other cavern there's going to be bats there's going to be the werewolves the yulv i think they're called i don't know how to say that name 
but there's going to be the werewolves and there's going to be the uh, bats all one stars so just keep that in mind they do hit pretty hard and they can be super annoying this one got to me a little bit just because there are there can be a ton of those werewolves and they tack ferociously so be ready for that so what you're looking for in this one is everything that you would normally look for you're going to fight off the you're going to find one of the doors that leads into the cultist area because you every one of these a lot of these caves end up having that cultist area the ones that worship Fenrir so you're looking for that once you find it it's all going to be marked with blue fire so keep an eye out for that um, but like I said these caves is going to be exactly like the other caves so everything looks the same except for the one change at the end the one main change at the end is that there is a mini boss at the end come prepared for heavy attacks from your how from your yulves they are they can be super annoying the bats as always are just annoying they don't really do any damage they're just annoying um, but other than that be ready for the yules because there are a ton of them and i mean a ton and they are annoying all right for anybody who doesn't want to hear about the mini boss now's the time to stop and skip forward all right the mini boss for the howling caverns is a cultist member <laughs> big surprise it is a tanky cultist member goes by the name of gira hafa and the one main difference is if you come in contact with any of these cultist members before they shoot fire at you the difference between gear hafa he's going to shoot ice at you be ready for that you're going to need you could frost resistance is great if you have that bring it if you don't oh well uh just watch out for each attack each attack is pretty slow for the most part so what he's going to do is he's going to have an ice slam where he's going to hit the ground and create a perimeter around him where ice affects the next one he's going to do is going to be like a frost breath by the way these are not the actual names of these attacks. I'm just, this is what I'm calling them. So you have Ice Slam and Frost Breath. It's going to create a cone of frost that shoots out. Once again, not super far, but it does do a ton of damage. So back up if you stay in it, get out of it really quickly. And then he's going to do a slap or like a little slap with his hand claw, whatever you want to call it. That really hurts. So back up with that as well. So what I do recommend is dodge the first two, come in when he goes for the, for the slash and block, parry that if you can. That way you can get a ton. You can get that two times bonus depending on the weapon you're using. Once again, I went in with black metal gear because that's that's what I had at the time. And I went in with that. I blocked, got got the two times parry, and then just went in for the attack with a, like that. It was just, I'd get trading off attacks like that. That seemed to work the best for me. But there are other ways to do this. So to avoid all the attacks completely, you can kite gear hoffa all the way up back to the entrance if you'd like. In case you guys didn't know, you can utilize the entrances this way. It takes some time, but you can jump up on the little ledge there. Gear Hoffa cannot reach you. If you go all the way back just before you exit, don't run out. You don't want to do that. You'll reset Gear Hoffa. So stay inside, but just before you exit, the, he shouldn't be able to hit you with any of his attacks. And you can kind of just lay some arrows into him. So this will take a while. Bring a ton of arrows if you want to do this. Bring your best bow, your best arrows. And you could do like fire arrows too. That'll cause a lot of damage on him. And you can also do like poison and stuff like that. Um, bring that stuff because that will, that will, that, that helps. And if you're, you're having a bad time trying to parry or trying to block, I get it. Don't, don't worry. This is a great solution. You can just stay up here and unload and eventually they will die. Granted, you can do this with every boss for the most part, by the way. Um, or with every uh, creature within these, within these caves and these tombs. Uh, not every boss, but every cave and every tomb, you, the, you can kite them back to the front and then just use the ledge because they can't get up there. So I don't know if they'll ever fix that, but let's hope they don't. But you don't have to if you want to. Like I said, just watch out for the three attacks. for the, And as soon as you see that slash attack coming, block it, parry it, use it to your advantage, and bam, you're good to go. Simple like that. Like always, once you kill Gearhafa, he'll drop the trophy. He'll also drop a chest, take it back to... Hill deer and bam, a whole new set of cosmetics ready for you to go. All right, the very last dungeon, probably the hardest one you're going to come across. It was for me. It may not be for you guys. It was super annoying, but it's... <laughs> Whew. All right, so the sealed tower is located in the plains biome and the sealed tower is not a location We've been before so this is this is completely new it it so I can't say it's like any of the other ones You've been in because you haven't been in them. You cannot break it down. You have to enter into it from the top That's how you get inside of this tower. Uh, you'll notice that there are these like wooden uh, platforms on the round it you can use those to your advantage I did uh, it, it can get kind of annoying so if you want to build straight up to it I completely understand but I use the platforms just because I thought it would be easier but you don't have to uh, so you can build ladders on the platforms and that way you can hop your way up 
but if you want to build a complete ramp all the way up there that might be even better in case you like die or something like that and you need to get back up there faster because trust me hopping up these little platforms doesn't always isn't always quick as you can imagine because it is placed in the plains biome this thing is utterly filled with all things stupid it, it has those stupid fuelings and it is filled to the brim with fuelings. There's so many in there and there's a bunch of fueling wizards and normal fuelings and it is absolutely insane. They all come pouring out of the top until you start working your way down. So you'll probably have a bunch pour onto the top the moment you jump up there. You need to, as soon as you kill them, you're going to walk down. It, it's a spiral staircase as you keep going down. Each time you get down to a new level, there will be an iron door you'll have to destroy. The moment you destroy that door, everything on the other side of it will start attacking you. So it could be, it could be one to two to three to four of, the, of fuelings in there, plus a couple of wizards or maybe just one wizard. It really depends. There are about four floors until you get to the bottom. So the big thing I can tell you, watch out for, you're going to see hay or grass on the floor. There are traps in those in those that do a ton of damage. So each time you step on one, it's more than likely could be a trap. So be careful with it as you're maneuvering. It's already tight quarters as it is. Best thing I can tell you to do is set off all the traps on the on the roof, heal back up or destroy them if you can if you can hit them, whatever, destroy them on the roof and then you just need to kite your way or kite all the enemies as much as you can. Each time you activate them, pull them to the roof to give you plenty of room to maneuver and fight. If you got one or two, you can probably manage just fine. But you know how fuelings are. They like to run around you and move and juke and move. And it, it, kick, it gets annoying, especially when you're trying to block two at once. And like I said, they're, they're stronger. So they're all one star at least. At least one star if you're by yourself. More if you have more people. But I'm giving you a strategy for a single player because, you know, that's what I do. But if, like I said, kite into the top gives you more space. If you can't kite into the top, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, just... Just keep working your way up the stairs. Sometimes they get caught on the stairs and you can kind of use that to your advantage. You can heal yourself. So bring plenty of heals, bring plenty of fire resistance because they're wizards. They're getting, they can shoot fire at you. Um, they also, some have fire torches. Don't go at night. Just there's a lot of like, don't do. Uh, but I, I mean, it's pretty much if you fought a village before like that, just not open space. All right, so here we are. We're here to the bosses. Skip this. Um, what's after this is going to be the outro. So you guys can just end the video unless you want to hear my beautiful outro, which I think you should, because I'm probably saying some lovely things about you. If you've made it this far in the video, if you have made it this far in the video and you like the video, please hit that like button. It really does help subscribe to the channel to catch more of my content. And I love you guys for it anyway. So here we go. Skip now. If you don't want to see the mini boss. So once you reach the final floor of the sealed tower, you will come in contact with Zill and Thunger. So basically it's one of the ogre fuelings. And on top of that is the, is a wizard. So <laughs> fun, right? Yeah. So not only do you have to deal with the attacks that the brute can do, which is the, you know, his normal, you know, his normal swing of his mace and then a slamming on the ground. But then you also have to deal with that. The wizard will shield him. And the wizard will also shoot fire at you while you're fighting. So there is a lot to deal with. Not to mention you are in confined quarters. So to take on the brute first, it's just like any other brute. You want to block as many of the attacks as you can. You can, usually if you wait for a second, he he will stand in the back of the room when you when you enter in. Sneak to the back. Go ahead and get a backstab right off the right off the bat. That's a great way to do it. He'll get lodged in the back of the room facing the wall, and you can usually get a backstab off really quickly, which is great. So once you've done that, now the fight's initiated. He's going to do his normal attacks. He's going to slam on the ground, then they have the swipe back and forth with the club. All of this can be blocked or parried. Parrying will do the two times damage, so then you can get a few sword swipes in. Don't go more than like at least one to two swipes with a sword because his next attack's coming and you want to be ready for it. Once you take care of Thunder, Zill will drop to the ground and then you will have to fight Zill. Zill's a lot easier to me than Thunder was just because Zill's a little smaller, so he doesn't take up as much space and you can avoid his fire attacks. Just like let him fire his fire attack, run up. He he will do a he will launch a fire attack forward. He will surround himself with a shield and he'll also do a little swipe attack with his his uh, staff. He'll hit you with that. You can block that. 
um, dodge the fire attacks, and then just swipe anytime you get a chance. If he has a shield available, you have to hit him twice to break the shield, and then you can start doing damage again. Once again, this is just kind of a rinse, repeat. Be, be wary of the fire attack. Keep your fire uh, resistance golden. You can do the same thing you did with Thunger. You can use the, or if you start low, getting low on health, just run back up the stairs a little bit. He, he can follow you a little bit, but he is a little slower. So you can, you can get a few heals off before he reaches you. So this one is super annoying just because I think there's like, it's mainly because there's two, not to mention fuelings and that whole, they're just annoying <laughs> and they all do that little <laughs> laugh the whole time. So, but all in all, once you defeat Zill, Trophy drops for both of them. Make sure you pick up both trophies. You want to you want to prove the fact you killed them both. Take those trophies for you that you deserved them. He'll also drop another chest. You'll take that to Hildur. This will be the last chest that you will get for Hildur, and then you're gonna take that to her, and you're gonna have all the all the new cosmetics available to you. Now this is where I get honest with you guys. Do I think it's worth it? No. <laughs> I think the I think the cosmetics are kind of eh. I would wish that you could apply the cosmetic to your armor so that you can still be armored but maybe wearing a fun cosmetic. That might be more more doable, but they didn't do that <laughs> yet. So maybe that'll be something to do in the future, but right now cosmetics are just kind of, eh. The best thing you can get from Hilda, in my opinion, is the barber kit, just because, and, and I, I like the fire pit too as well. Uh, and I don't really think anything else that's that great. I can't, not off the top of my head anyway, but the barber for sure, just cause it's fun to change your, you know, to be able to change your hairstyle and stuff like that. And then the fire, the fire pit I really like because it's just, it's a good way to get fire around your house without having to worry about, uh, placing floors and things like that to get wood, you know, cause you can't put fire just anywhere in your house, but you can, if you have this stand. So that works, but I will say, do I think it's worth it to do this? I think it's worth it because the mini bosses are fun. I wish you got more from the mini bosses. I wish you could make like a cool weapon off of their hide or something like that, or from their gear, maybe make cool armor from their gear. Maybe they'll add that in the future, but right now you can't. Um, so do I think it's worth it? No, <laughs> but I do think they're fun. I do think, I thought it was kind of cool to add them. I thought the mini bosses were fun to kill. They were fun to fight. It was cool to kill them. I felt I felt proud when I killed, you know, a few of them. Some when you're one of them was really easy, but the other ones were I was like, okay, cool, got them, finally, yes, you know. So I don't hate it, but it's not the greatest thing in the world. I do wish they do something a little different, but that's just nitpicking. I, I love that they're still adding to the game, and, it, and don't be wrong, it is still in, or, you know, it's in early access, you know. So <laughs> this is all just. It's the same thing when you play game, when we played games for ground like grounded for years. You know, it's like you nitpick at everything, but it's not a final product yet. So you can't really nitpick that much. It's just kind of throwing ideas out there. And I have plenty of them for this game. I think there's some stuff they could do way better. And I think that, you know, I think that uh, I think this was a great a great addition. I love the fact that you I I wish that for how many locations they set up, I kind of wish I'd have had to go to all of them, but I only had to go to three. There's other locations out there, but I don't have to go to them. So I kind of wish I'd had to go to all of them. But that, I know that's a lot more work, but it would have made me explore the map more. You know, because I don't have to explore the map if I don't want to. I know where all the stuff is that I want to collect, and I, there's no more out there for me to collect that's different. You know, so it's like, it would have made me explore the, the map more. But... I digress. You know, it's whatever. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope the tips work well for you. Hope that you utilize them. And I and I, I hope that you play this game. I think that it's an amazing, fun game. And I really hope that you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I will gladly catch you in the next one. Peace out.